Well, hello, everybody. In this second edition of our uh, steam locomotive kit series, uh, we'll be getting the mechanism working, hopefully. So we're going to try to put the wheels and axles for the drivers into the frame, get them working smoothly, uh, hook the motor up, and see if the thing will actually self-propel down the track uh, before putting on the side rods and cross heads and so on. So just the basic wheels and drive mechanism. We'll get that going first, hopefully, and uh, in the future episodes, we'll go to the next steps beyond that. So uh, here goes. Well, next, we're going to be getting these uh, drivers and the axles up into the frame so they roll smoothly. That's uh, something that's really critical. And uh, see, they just go in the slots in the frame like that. And the cover plate goes over them to hold them in place. Now, when the axles were taken out of the box, they looked like they had a little bit of corrosion on them from sitting in the box for 20 years. So, uh, I hit them real gently with this real fine tooth file and shine, I got them all shiny. Probably removed just a little bit of, uh, of stuff that didn't belong on there. Same thing for this other one, although I had to use a narrower file like this one. So, I did that. And then the slots, I hit with the uh, a small fine tooth needle nose file just to make sure there's no rough spots in there. I didn't try to actually remove any material, at least not to speak of. And uh, so I've done those two things. And uh, I think I got them rolling now. And uh, I'll show you that in just a second. So here are the axles uh, in the frame. The bottom plate isn't on yet, one step at a time. So, uh, Looks like they roll pretty well. And I don't feel any glitches. And uh, I can tip this track up and let it roll, as you can see. So that seems okay. Next, we'll put the bottom plate on and try it again. So here we are with the bottom plate installed. It's held on by two screws, one there and one there. And so we'll, uh, let's see if it still rolls. It seems like it does. Letting gravity do the work here. It seems fine. So the plate's not uh, impeding the rotation of the drivers at all. So that's good news. Next, we'll put the cylinders on. Well, here we are with the cylinders now installed on the frame. They go on the top side and they're held on with these two screws up from the bottom side. So uh, again, we'll check the, the rolling and uh, this will probably make it a little bit front heavy. It'll still sit on the wheels, but it, uh, it wouldn't take much to tip it over with that extra weight there. So rolling test again. All still looks good. Well, so far so good. And finally, for this series of tests, I've installed the boiler temporarily because uh, it will come off again. But it, it goes in with a couple of tabs through this hole in the, in the rear cab plate and one screw right up through the middle of the cylinders. So that puts quite a bit of extra weight on the assembly. And so uh, one more time for the rolling test. And uh, again, it seems okay. I've discovered this uh, test track I've got is on a piece of wood, of course. There's just the slightest little bow to it, not quite straight. And you can tell that when you're rolling something along it, because when it encounters a change in the grade, uh, you know it. It'll either stop or speed up. but. Uh, as far as I can tell, there's no impediment to the rolling on the axles. So, uh, looks like we got this one ready to go to the next step. Well, at this point, I think it's time to uh, disassemble all this stuff and take the frame down to the shop and file off this protrusion here that uh, needs to come off for the new motor to go on. See, the new motor has its own sloping uh, fixture there to get the angle right so it doesn't need the cast on one. So 
off to the garage where there's a vice and some big files to do some serious filing on this thing. And then uh, that'll be that. Okay, now here we are back from the shop with that motor mount protrusion all uh, filed off of there. And so I uh, thought that needed to be done before we went any further with the mechanism assembly. You know, get the machine work done. So uh, onward to whatever's next then. Well, the next thing is, got the motor mount installed here on the frame. Uh, took a little bit of finagling. Of course, the motor had to be taken off the motor mount to get at the screw that's, that holds the mount on. And I had to drill and tap a, a hole for that screw to screw into. So it turned out to be a, a 1-72 screw. Worked okay. And, uh, I had to file off the head of that round head screw just a little bit so the motor wouldn't rock on it and it would sit flat in the mount. But anyway, it's in now and the motor seems to work okay. Uh, at least it fits okay. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. So uh, here's the chassis with the motor installed in. You can see again the uh, worm gear is cut into the flywheel and the, the gears are engaged. You know, with that installed, you can't turn the front axle. Uh, so that's how it goes together. The next thing is gonna be the body. And I did a trial fitting on that and discovered I gotta file away a little bit of metal right there to get that to come down over the flywheel. So uh, that's the next thing. Well, back from the shop now with the boiler. Did some filing on it to clear the flywheel on the motor. You probably can't see it in the video, but a little bit right here and along the sides here, both sides, of course. And uh, with that, just got enough clearance, just barely. But it'll come down on here. And uh, just like so. So, the next thing, well, we'll see what the next thing is. I think that takes care of getting the motor installed, at least for now. Of course, it'll have to come off again to put the valve gear together so the wheels can turn. But uh, anyway, it'll go. So, so far, so good. Well, with the uh, decoder all warmed up and the motor installed, it's definitely time to try to run this thing just to see what's going to happen. And uh, so here we go. It moves, but boy, look, there's a, there's a hitch once per rev on the, on the wheels. Looks like we got a little problem. So we got to look into that. Well, here's the answer on the hitch. And the gear on this driver is split. I know you can't see it in the video, I'm pretty sure it, Pretty much takes a magnifying glass to see it. But that gear is split right down to the axle, which makes the gear tooth spacing uneven in that one spot around the circumference. And the, so the worm gear really has a hitch when it encounters that uneven gear spacing. So this is trash. So unless I can find a replacement for it, this thing ain't gonna run. I guess the long shot solution might be to put a Northwest Shortline gearbox in here, but that would be a whole nother project. So uh, we'll see. I will make an attempt to find a replacement part for this and we'll see what happens. So bad news today. Well, I talked to Bowser, asked them if they had any more of these. I didn't think they would cause it's uh, pretty old. And sure enough, they're out of stock. But what they do have is the gear alone without the wheels and the axle. So I ordered a couple. And of course, putting that on is going to require pulling a wheel off the axle and then pulling the gear off and then putting it all back on and requartering the drivers. So it's going to be a little bit of a project. But we will see. 
it's probably easier than putting in a whole gearbox that still remains plan B. Just replacing the gear here is plan A. So uh, we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, waiting for those gears to arrive, I'm probably going to go ahead and start drilling holes in the boiler for the detail parts. Quite a few holes are needed all over the place for the details. So I'll start going through that one by one and uh, see where that takes me. So uh, lots of activity coming. Well, we're moving on now to replacing the gear on the driver axle. And part of that job is uh, checking the quartering of the drivers. And for those who aren't familiar, you know, the, uh, the crank pins on the drivers and the, are set 90 degrees apart on the left side to the right side. And uh, it has to be the same on both sets of axles or the rods will bind up. So it's important to get the quartering right. And to do that, we're gonna use this little gizmo I don't know how well you can see that, but this is a Northwest Shortline Quarter. It's got a place here for the axle to drop into. I'll show you that in a minute. And a couple of sliding uh, templates that come on here with a 90 degree angle cut in them. And so the procedure is take these pins, screw them into the holes here where the crank pins go. And then drop the axle into the slot. It takes a little bit of a push. Tighten up these little screws to keep it securely in the slot. And then you rotate the, uh, the axle until this crank pin hits the, the template on one side. And then you take the template on the other side, push it on the shafts here and see how the fit is on the other side. Does the other crank pin hit the template exactly, or is there a small space there or whatever? Uh, I, I did this just a minute ago where I tightened the screws and everything, I, and I, what I got was that it was a good fit, uh, a good match to the template. I tried to slip a piece of paper in between the, the crank pin and the template and when everything's all tightened up, it wouldn't quite go in there. In fact, that's uh, pretty much the way it is now. It wouldn't quite go in. So it's within the thickness of a piece of paper of being the right quartering. So again, this is the non-driven axle that we got in there right now. So the message is if I, uh, if I re-quarter the driven axle using this same tool, the quartering hopefully comes out close enough to the other axle, which we're not going to touch. So... Uh, the next thing is going to be to put the driven axle in there and check it. A so bit. here we are with the uh, the pins now screwed into the driven axle wheels. See the gear there. And uh, we'll proceed to put that into the jig. Well, here we are with the uh, driven axle now uh, into the jig, the quartering jig. You can see, hopefully, the gear fell into a slot there between these two pieces. So the axle's across there. It's bottomed out in the bottom of the slot. and. I tightened up these two screws right here that keeps the axle bottomed out in the slot in the correct position and keep his, keeps it from moving uh, as you turn the axle. So I've turned the axle around until this crank pin right here hit the template. And then, uh, as before, we'll slip the other side on here and see if we got a good tight fit on the other crank pin and it looks like we do and uh, a piece of paper won't go in there so uh, it all seems okay so what we've learned is that from the factory both these axles are quartered the same way that's <laughs> that's the main thing we've learned from this little exercise so the next thing looks like it's going to be to take this out of this jig and put it in the uh, puller and actually take the wheel and the gear off the axle. That's where the real fun begins. Of course, the whole purpose of this exercise is to be able to, to put the wheel back on the axle quartered the same way as it was, so it matches the other axle. So that's the plan, so onward we go. 
Well, here we are set up to begin the, uh, the wheel pulling operation. So this is the north, northwest, north, <laughs> northwest short line, easy for you to say, puller. And of course, it's a little bit of a misnomer because it's really more of a pusher than a puller. But you see, you put the wheel set here in the bottom of the fixture. It's a threaded rod here with a pin sticking out the bottom that rests on the axle. And so once it's all in there, you start screwing this thing down, it push, just pushes the axle out of the wheel. So uh, it's more of a pusher than a puller, but we're ready to do it right now. So we're gonna just twist that baby and see what happens here. And it's a little bit of a resistance at first, but it looks like it broke it loose. And uh, the axle's coming out. And there we are. The wheel's off the axle. Now I found that I can pull the gear off by hand. I didn't need to use the puller for that. So as you can see here, once I get the, the gear past this knurling in the center of the axle, it comes right off. So... We're ready to put the new gear on there then. So here's the new gear going onto the shaft, onto the axle. It's partway on there right now. I'm, so far I'm doing it by hand. It's pretty stiff, but I, I was able to move it this far. But I might have to use that puller to give it a little help here. Well, here we are set up to push on the other end of that axle with the puller with the gear down here and try to push the axle uh, through the gear until it gets into the right spot. So we're gonna give it a try. Well, that worked okay. Here we have the gear pushed onto the axle to what I think is the right spot right in the middle where the knurling was. So uh, hopefully, so far so good. Well, the axle is now back in the quartering jig. The axle's bottomed out in the slot. The screws are tightened up to keep it there and uh, rotated the wheel around until the uh, crank pin has just hit the template right there. And so uh, it's set up to, to start the operation of putting the wheel back on. Well, the assembly is now back in the quartering jig, as you can see here. The, uh, the wheel that's going back on is this one. It's not pushed on the axle yet, just kind of put in place. And you see the crank pins are there and they're They've been twisted around, so they're resting against their respective uh, templates. So, with the alignment set there, we're ready to start pushing the gear, or rather the wheel, on. I'll try to do it manually if I can. If not, we might have to clamp this thing with some kind of a clamp or something to get enough pressure. So we'll soon find out. Well, the gear's about halfway on now, so far, by hand, and that's been working. So it's time to get out the old NMRA gauge here to start checking the wheel spacing. And uh, it's not quite there yet. It's still missing a sixteenth of an inch or so. So a little more pushing. If it'll keep moving by hand, we'll do it that way. Well, the gear is now on there. And uh, it looks like the gauge is okay. I checked it with the, with the gauge there. And so uh, looks like it's ready to come out and... Uh, on to the next step. Now, with the uh, gear changed out and the mechanism reassembled, it's time to give it another go with the decoder and see if it'll run better now. So here goes. That looks good. It seems quiet and smooth, no hitches. The chuffs are even timed pretty close to correct, but that can be tweaked later. All right, it's time to declare victory on that one.